How you doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Educated Call Snap channel. I know it's been a little bit of a while. I was helping a family member that got COVID recently. Also, have been, it's not an excuse, I've also been playing some other games. But we're back, and we got to talk about Annihilus. It's definitely a polarizing card in the meta, so we'll see what my thoughts about it is. Let's get started. All right, where do we begin with this card? So Anaya's is a 5-7. Uh, on review, your cards with zero or less cards switch sides, destroy those that can't. So you got to keep in mind, it's just, it's switching sides, all of your cards that are zero or less from all of your lanes. I think that was something that wasn't super clear. And it's not going to destroy like every card you are playing. It's only going to destroy the cards that are cost zero or less that are not switching sides. So essentially, if your opponent clogs a lane, your like your negative three hood is not going to be able to switch sides. So instead, it will just be destroyed. So it's kind of nice in that it has this kind of safeguard for counterplay in that, oh, if they, if they um, fill a lane, well, you can still just destroy it. And it's not like a horrible answer for playing all these like low cost cards so this ends up being pretty good in junk right junk is the r type that really uh, makes sense to play this in i i would say it's a it's another piece now that for junk but it also has other applications in lockdown people have been playing in galactus control with like professor x pretty good and zabu also kind of works pretty well with this since a lot of the synergies can be found on four so zabu lets you play those a little bit more of them or a little bit cheaper. So definitely some good synergies. Overall, when it comes to whether I would recommend this card or not, I would, ooh, <laughs> I would recommend it for people that like junk decks. So that's gonna be my takeaway. So it's not, it's not that the card is bad or anything. I would say like the main issue is this is a very polarizing card. And that if you like the junk play style, I think you're going to enjoy this card. It does what it what you want it to do. And it can be frustrating for your opponents. And I, I think that's something junk players like, you know, just frustrating their opponents. So this just does what I think you want a junk deck to do, or at least a junk bomb to do. And junk doesn't really have a bomb like this. So it's just good for those type of players, right? If you like junk, if you like that kind of control. And I think it's pretty good. Something to keep in mind that I would consider this is like his worst meta. The day after he comes out, everyone's aware of this card. Everyone is at least teching some thoughts into the deck, but the, the card is still doing pretty well, surprisingly well, better than I would think for a card of this magnitude. And seeing it in play, this card's actually surprisingly flexible, right? Like, I, it's not something I would have thought when, you know, it comes out, but seeing it in action, you don't have to over-invest to make this card work. Like, you just need one or two synergies in your deck, and it's perfectly fine. So just hood hood, hood with this, right? Like, you're, you get the demon, plus you get the negative three to go over, Right, it turns into a seven mana sixteen, which is really good. Right, and that's just that's it. That's all you're doing, right? Like you're, it's just hood and annihilus, right? And same thing with debris, right? Even if you're not um, getting any power, you're clogging two lanes, right? With two rocks, like that's not very good for most decks. Obviously, people could be playing like patron and stuff like that, and then it's okay. But in a lot of matchups, right, especially like things like move or th and stuff, just clogging people's lanes is so detrimental. So that's all you're doing, right? You're just playing a debris and you're playing an Nihilus and that is already a pretty powerful effect. Same thing with Sentry. Sentry plus a Nihilus is, is a ton of power if you can get the negative 10 to go to the opponent's side. So there's just, you don't have to fully invest in a junk deck, which is a, initially what I was thinking, but seeing it in play, at least high elo, a lot of times when it, it seems effective to me is when they're just like 
putting in a like a, a synergy and then playing with that one synergy or t or two or whatever like hood isn't that hard to put in mini decks and then they just like they play their normal game but they have annihilus on five right and, and, and that's been pretty fine so seeing it in action i actually think it's going to be better considering that this is the meta where people are like really tacking into it and i still i still see it struggle to kind of overcome it so I just think like, you know, a month later, if you're playing this, people won't have like these very specific counters. <laughs> you know, I was talking to someone, they were saying they're playing Ghost Annihilus to kind of circumvent it. And I'm just like, yeah, I guess that works, but it's really not something you should be, that should be able to do, right? Like, oh, I'll just play Ghost of Nihilus in case my opponent plays a Nihilus and I can counter it. Like, it's like, what? What is this? But right now, you know, a lot of people are aware of it, so they have these weird counters. Um, I will say that even though this card can be effective, it has bad matchups. So there are just archetypes that will eat this, in, in my opinion. I would say Destroy High Evolution have some of the better matchups. Also, Control in a sense in in has has some good ways of like stopping you from doing what you want so i do think there are some matchups that just kind of win very easily into a nihilist if if you're heavily investing into the archetype at least so it's not it's not like oh this card is great it wins a lot it, you know it's low key levels it's not but it does have some matches where it does really well into, and it also has some matches where it, it's just not the card you want to be playing. And then it's also a telegraphed kind of game plan in terms of like people are playing debris, right? Like, you know, so you can kind of keep that in mind when you're, you're deck building. People are playing Sentry, right? So you can kind of keep that in mind when you are like playing where your cards are, right? Are you going to be playing with that Sentry in mind? Um, and things like that, right? It's it's somewhat telegraphed, so that can help you in the matchups if you've played into a lot of this and you kind of know, or you've played the deck yourself and you kind of know what you, people are trying to do, that can help you out. So it is, um, so overall, I do recommend the card. Like, I think the card is good. I also think it can be used in tech, maybe later in the in the future, where being able to just like move your, your Viper negative one to the opponent's side like or same thing with like some locations right some locations will give you uh the minus two ninja right like there are some tech at uses of this card but generally right if you're playing this card you have some synergy in there even though it doesn't have to be like a huge amount of synergy so there's definitely some good things to it and overall i do recommend this card if you like junk for sure but it's it's not a card You'll love if you don't like the, the play style, right? Like, you'll just be frustrated if you don't like the play style. So just be aware of that. All right, so let's go on to the spotlights itself. I do think, for me, this was the best spotlight of the month. So I don't know if um, everyone will agree, but for me, I would say, ignore the dates. This is, this is just a comment from uh, someone mentioned I should put the dates there. And, and I agree, but I didn't put this... <laughs> <laughs> now I'm bringing attention to it. Looking at the spotlights, we can see I still pretty much agree with the ratings I did before. I would say Annihilus is a little bit better if you want to just pick up Annihilus and you don't have, um, you're not missing any of the other two cards. As long as you are okay playing junk type decks or at least incorporating some of of junk into it, I do think it's a fine card to pick up just by itself. But still, um, Annihilus, Dakin, X-23. I would say X-23 a little bit more of a priority than Dakin, but Dakin still does see play and destroy and discard decks. However, it's not as core as I would say X-23 is in the destroy archetype. You, um, Pretty much it's a standard in destroy. If you're going to be playing any destroy decks, X-23 is like what you want to be having. However, uh, you know, it's still, it's still important to pick it up. So... If you are missing either of the two, I think this is a great spotlight to get. It's just going to give you value over time. So still still pretty in, pretty much in agreement with what we did initially. Uh, now let's look at some of the decks you can play with Annihilus. There are 
quite a few archetypes that I've been seeing in the meta for now. I would say the first one is just like pretty standard. It's just you're playing a control with Professor X, but you do have the Annihilus tools. So you do get the hood, you do get the debris, you get the sentry. I would say those three are the main uh, problems or, or the main strategies people do use. There are other things you can do with Annihilus, but I would say those three are like the easiest to get big value of. And then you still you're still playing Miss Marvel in this one. You still get the Professor X. You still get the Lion, right? Lion's also doing pretty well with Annihilus since you can clog a lane. So it makes it very easy to say, oh, they're going to be playing in this particular lane because they can't fight the other ones. So definitely think this is a deck you you'll see. It has a lot of like annoying cards essentially <laughs> in there, and it does work. So I don't really have anything bad to say. Next up, we have Galactus. Oh man, I ah uh, this. <laughs> I think this deck is annoying. Honestly, personally, I don't like it. Uh, but uh, some people have been trying to play Galactus forever, and and this is the new, the new strategy. Just kind of sending out uh, stupid stuff. Like essentially, they want to clog a lane with the Annihilus so that you have no counterplay. So if, if turn five, they can like send over their hood or whatever and their rocks, and then you they've locked their lane with uh, with goblins or something. And as long as it's lower than five, they auto win because they can just play Galactus in that empty lane and boom, you know, there's, there's no counterplay. Same thing with Eliath, right? If you can just lock a lane, right? Then Eliath will win the other, so it's uh, i it works right i've definitely seen i've definitely lost to this it's just so frustrating personally so i don't know why i'm promoting it but you know galactus players will find a way to get it to work but yeah definitely something i've been seeing next up we have bounce i would say this one is probably my favorite of the munch well I don't I actually like a different one, but this one is, I think, pretty good and that you are just playing good power cards. So you're playing bounce with werewolf, with beast, all that stuff. But now you can just move your hood if you don't want to destroy it and, and, and whatnot. So it's not too it's not too crazy personally, but you do get to use bounce. And then the analysis kind of plays more like a tech card. Obviously, you have the Sentry as well, but you can kind of, since a lot of people are playing Annihilus, you can kind of follow it up as well. So, definitely think this is a pretty good list to play if you want to play, you know, like a standard deck, but just incorporate some Annihilus tech into it. Uh, next up, this one, this one's more my favorite. It's, it's, it's still kind of bouncy, but now you get to play Darkhawk. I just think... I just think it's good. <laughs> you know, like Dark is pretty yeah, it's one of my favorite cards, right? So um and you and it just kind of has a lot of like things going for it. Just a bounce deck with some Dark Hawk pieces in there. And then last one is a little bit more um heavy tech, right? Where you're more focused on hazmat here. So you have hazmat, you have man thing. You got Absorbing Man if you want to copy rocks or anything like that. So you just get to really deliberate, like really mess them up. This is like full junk, full toxicity, right? Just give them rocks and then hazmat it down or, or man thing it down. It's just very, very, very annoying to play into. So definitely seen it work. But yeah, you could, you could kind of see the vibe of Annihilus decks, right? They try to be annoying. They try to give you things you don't want. And just, you know, hopefully your opponent doesn't have, like, any counters, right? Like, I think Killmonger, right, does a good amount as long as you're playing it after the debris, right? It kind of stops that uh, annoying rock scenario where they give you, like, two rocks and two lanes. Like, uh, like that, that, that kind of play is very frustrating. But, yeah, definitely an interesting card, very polarizing. I do wonder what second dinner thinks about it honestly this week's um or this month's cards have been pretty hit or miss in my opinion right 
Gl Gladiator, I'm not a big fan of. Same thing with Martyr, not the biggest fan. So, and then this one is like super polarizing as well. So, definitely an interesting set of cards. We'll see. What are your thoughts? Do you guys like this card? Do you guys hate it? Do you guys like the card but hate the implementation? Do you hate people who are playing Galactus with it? Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, once again, you know, we should be back to standard. They're, they're cured. So, all things considered, I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and have a wonderful rest of your day. Educated calling to snap. Once you watch him, you won't go back. He'll teach you to marvel snap. Your skills will be improved.